This video will discuss thermal energy in molecular dynamics simulations. So in our previous video on ensemble properties, we mentioned how one way to get the average value of some thermodynamic property of a molecular system that you simulate is to do a weighted, a Boltzmann weighted average over all possible configurations, but that that integral is very, very difficult to carry out. So one method that's commonly employed is to just to simulate the system for a large period of time as kind of a bunch of Newtonian particles bouncing around inside of whatever simulation you've got. So in this case, what we're going to have to use is we're going to have to have uh, both positions and velocities or momentum of all of our particles, all of our atoms, in this in this simulation. So we need to discuss what these velocities mean and where we're going to get them from. So as we've seen thus far in this playlist, um, there are going to be n atoms in our system, and each of them has an x, y, and a z coordinate. So overall, we have three n coordinates. So our system is three n dimensional, and we have what are uh, called what's called a three n dimensional potential energy function. So we have all of those coordinates. Additionally, uh, we're going to have a velocity for each of those atoms. Remember, velocity is the first derivative of position with respect to time. So how fast are you moving relative to the clock that we are using to measure? And for the velocity, that is a vector. So once again, it will have uh, some value in the x, y, and z direction for every single atom in our system. So we have three n components in our velocity vector overall for the system. So our coordinates, those determine uh, what th the things like interatomic distances, bond lengths, bond angles, torsion angles, those determine all the factors that go into our energy function and determine our potential energy. So the position relates to potential energy. And the velocities, those relate to what we call kinetic energy, the energy of motion. So our total energy is going to be a sum of potential energy and kinetic energy, with potential energy being the energy of position and kinetic energy being the energy of movement. All right, so our potential energy, as I mentioned, is a function of three n dimensions, the set of all of our x, y, z coordinates. We have discussed these functions extensively thus far in this playlist, so I'm not going to touch on that further here. What we're interested in right now is the kinetic energy, how to get that, and what that relates to. So the kinetic energy is going to be a sum over all of our atoms, i equals 1 to n, of 1 half mv squared. Kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared for every single particle. So we have one half mass of the particle times the velocity squared. Um, that vector from Pythagorean theorem is going to be velocity of the x component squared plus velocity of the y component squared plus velocity of the z component squared. So the total velocity would be the square root of this value in parentheses. Okay, so now the question becomes, well, um, in molecular dynamics, we're going to get how these values change uh, from time to time based off the gradient, the forces that our atoms feel. But how do we assign them initially? How do we know what our velocities are going to be at some initial state for the system? So that's going to come from the fact that kinetic energy and temperature are directly proportional to one another. So if we look at the ideal gas law, you'll find that pressure times volume in an ideal gas, which is a unit of energy, is equal to number of moles times gas constant times temperature, which is equal to number of atoms time, or particles, number of particles times Boltzmann constant times temperature. And that energy, since there's no potential energy for an ideal gas, is all kinetic. So that energy is going to be equal to this sum that we have here. And that energy is directly proportional to the temperature of the system. So for an ideal gas particle, the temperature is directly proportional to the kinetic energy of our system. And the kinetic energy is related to the velocity squared. So the square root of this, or the average value of this, would be what we call the root mean squared velocity. And that value is proportional to the square root of our temperature. So we have the velocity of our system is our velocity of a particle 
is equal to the square root of x component squared plus y component squared plus z component squared. The root mean squared velocity is equal to the square root of the average value of our velocity squared. So let's see, so we have the velocity squared will be this squared or this. The average value of that will be averaging over all of our atoms. And then we would take the square root of that average value. So that is going to be related to our temperature. So our temperature tells us approximately how fast our atoms and molecules should be moving. All right, so we discussed this line over here. So we can say that the average value of mass times velocity, if I have uh, divided both sides by n here, is going to be equal to one over n times the sum from i equals one to n mass times velocity squared. Oh, sorry, I'm just defining the value here. Yep, the average value of it would be divided by the number of atoms of the sum of their mass times velocity squared. So nkt would be n over two times one over n square root i equals one to n mivi squared. So what do we do here? We took the nkt and we substituted in, let's see. Ah, so we take the we take the one half out there and then we just multiply by n over n. That's where that comes from. We have a one half, then n over n sum mi velocity i squared. So we get that term and that there. So I'm going to cancel out the n's on the outside here. And this value in parentheses is what we've defined as the average mass times velocity squared. So we have that. So multiply both sides by two. So we have two kt equals the average value of mass times velocity squared, which there's no reason we should prefer the x, y, or z direction relative to others. So this is equal to uh, mass times x velocity squared plus y velocity, z velocity, since we have this definition here. All right, then we have, <clears throat> as I mentioned, all of those should be equal to one another. So 2kt is equal to three times mass of the particle times our average mass times x velocity squared. So simplifying this into our final algebraic result, we say that the magnitude of the average value of our velocity in any given direction for any given particle that we have in our system that we use to assign initial velocities. We're gonna say that that's approximately the square root of two Boltzmann constant times temperature divided by three times the mass of the particle. So for example, in the program we'll be using shortly in a few videos from my computational chemistry GitHub repository, down in the scripts molecular mechanics mm lib directory you'll find the simulate.py module and down in there we'll find a simulation base class and then i have a derived class down here molecular dynamics there it is and a function in here called where we're going to initialize the velocities depending on temperature and there for each individual velocity uh, that starts out by saying, let's see, we got math. So we have square root two times gas constant times temperature over three, as we mentioned right down there. And then there should be a part with the mass. Yeah, that times uh, mass to the negative one half, which puts it down on the inside the uh, square root in the denominator. And then um, using that basically to assign a random value according to some Gaussian distribution with that type of uh, with that type of uncertainty for three coordinates of each of the atoms. So when we start looking at molecular mechanics in a few or molecular dynamics in a few videos, this is where our initial velocity assignments are going to come from.